Oh, just want to suggest that at the end of the video you leave a comment. We just thought it would be a quicker and more, you know, like appropriate way of getting to the UK, you know, after the sad news of, of the Queen's passing. Well, thank you for confirming that this story is indeed true. I, for one, thought there were limits to your behaviour, you know, lines below which you would not sink. But it appears not, as this action was astonishingly crude, ridiculous, hubristic and insulting, all in equal measure. No, I was just distraught with grief, you know, and I just wanted to get over there, well, over here, I suppose, as quick as possible. And in a mode of transport that was more befitting, you know, our status as the only, you know, UK royals living in the US. A former colony, don't you know? Yes, Harry, what an excellent way to ingratiate yourself to your fellow countrymen. And even though, like, I'm thoroughly ashamed to be an American, but I still thought it had enough respect for us, you know, indeed for itself, to let us borrow Air Force One, you know, just for a short time, to get to where we were needed. But Jill Biden, you know, Dr. Jill Biden apparently vetoed the idea. Well, rumours are that they didn't trust you not to go snooping around and then leak what you found to the press. Oh. Why on earth would they think that? Well, you do have form. You know, she's not a real doctor, don't you? Dr. Jill Biden, not a real doctor. No, I wouldn't play that game if I were you two. Why not? Well, uh, you're not a real prince, uh, Meghan's not a real duchess, and neither of you are real talents. <laughs> Good point. Yeah, we are getting some feedback come through, right? And one of the most common criticisms seems to be that we were disrespectful somehow by not honoring the proper, you know, solemnity of the situation, you know, following the death of the Queen. Yeah, yeah. And apparently it's insulting to expect the US taxpayer to fund the chauffeuring of, you know, basic nobodies across the Atlantic. And do you think they have a point? No, no. No? Not at all. Probably. Well, it does appear to a neutral observer that your immediate reaction to the death of the Queen was to try and boost your own profile. Well, had you have arrived on Air Force One, it would have, well, maybe not overshadowed the Queen's death, but it would have been a major talking point at a period where all the proper focus should have been on the Queen's legacy. Well, many people at home, and I won't read the messages because I know that Harry wells up quite easily, were quite shocked that even at a moment of profound sadness and, as you said, solemnity, that your default reaction was one of self-promotion. If you're in the game, you've got to hustle. Grift is gonna grift. <laughs> the White House's swift denial of your request must indicate to you the sheer level of gall of nerve encapsulated in your petition. I mean, the US taxpayer must be shocked to learn of your cheek. And had you have actually arrived in London at that sad time on Air Force One, well, the UK taxpayer would have never forgiven you. I mean, you would have simultaneously ruined your relationship with both countries. Well, we are fond of efficiency. I, I really don't know, right, what the big deal is. I mean, we were just, two individuals who are desperate to get to our loved ones, you know, after the passing of our matriarch, you know, our beloved matriarch. And I think, I thought people would at least be able to see the human side of this, you know, the human, the human level. But after you were refused, why didn't you go with Harry anyway? Because if I'm not going to go on Air Force One, then I'm not going to go at all. I mean, we're just arriving some common old private jet. <laughs> What's the point? That was the video. Uh, if you wouldn't mind liking, subscribing, uh, hit the comments and the notification bell. Fabulous. Do it all. Thanks.